Hi everyone, my name is Yarek from Genius Gecko and welcome to another video when, where I will be discussing advanced roadmaps. If you haven't watched my previous video, please check them out on, on our YouTube channel. Uh, this video will be kind of a follow-up to our previous one as it will be focusing on planning. Uh, it will Most of, of this video will revolve around two features and these are scenarios and how to schedule. Uh, remember that if you have any questions, problems, doubts, you can always reach out to us. We are offering uh, training services, consultations, and we have proven implementation process uh, to achieve the desired goals. All right, so let's have a look at scenarios first, as this feature is a bit simpler. Uh, so scenarios are available over here. You can see that at the moment I have only one. Although it is possible that right after you create your plan, this drop-down will not be here. In that case, you need to enable this in configuration. Uh, yeah, there will be a button to enable it right here. If you have this, you can create multiple scenarios. So I could do this either from this screen or uh, let's get back over here and create it here. Uh, we can decide what this scenario should copy or what should be the initial plan in this scenario. So I'll just have a copy of this initial scenario. Let's create it. Now you can see that I can pick or switch between those two scenarios, but what it actually gives us, what it allows us to do. Uh, so you will see that I can edit my uh, initial scenario, so I can change it here, uh, sprints, I can change dates, I could assign uh, tasks to different teams, well in, in this plan there is only one team, uh, but I can do all the changes, then I will switch to second scenarios, scenario and these changes won't be applied, I could actually do some other changes. Yeah, so let's move this one, make this longer, and I will get back to initial scenario. You will see that the changes I did in initial scenario are here. So now we have two plans in parallel, right? So you can have multiple different scenarios, uh, do different changes on them on the plan and see what works best for you. Uh, so basically after, after you have this, you may talk to other uh, other people, to other stakeholders, decide which path is better for you, uh, and then say that, okay, we're going this direction, so this is what we apply. Now, this is something really important. Changes I did in both of these scenarios were not reflected on uh, Jira issue level. Uh, so I will go over here, uh, yeah, there are basically changes. The moment I will confirm these changes, they will be applied to Jira issues. This means that, first of all, in this case, the sprint will be updated, the start and end date will be updated on the Jira issue level. When this is done, uh, this scenario will basically be, it will be now synced with Jira issues, but the other scenario, will not be affected. So I'll switch to the second scenario. You will see that changes over here are, are still not reviewed, so they are not applied to Jira issues. I could go here and now say selected changes in Jira, but this could overwrite changes that I just did or approved from my initial plan. So there is a risk that working on multiple plans, you will get kind of a mess. So in my view, this scenarios is not something that you should use all the time. So you shouldn't have like five scenarios where you're doing different things all the time. Uh, yeah, because in that case, one scenario will be overreading changes done in the over overriding changes done in the other. So I don't think that's the best approach. But at key moments where you are not, you need to update the scenario and you are not really sure which way to go is better, uh, this feature is actually really useful. So you can just 
check how the changes will impact your plan and then decide on one or, or the other you can remove uh, the, the, the one that was not needed uh, and, and just keep on working on the one that you approved. Okay, so let's now look at auto schedule feature. Uh, but before we do that, one remark. Uh, I will be presenting this to you on a very simple setup. So basically in this plan, we have simple, single team. There is a single board with sprints associated with this team uh, and that's basically it. So we do not have multiple teams, multiple boards uh, from which we pull in the tickets and this is because this out of schedule feature can be a bit overwhelming when you will see how much uh, it can change in our plan. It would be hard to explain, hence the simple setup. If you have more complex one, if you will be struggling, struggling with it, drop us an email, we'll try to help. Uh, sadly, we won't be able to cover this in this video as th there is quite a lot of different uh, approaches and setups that, that may cover the same area of, of you know, having multiple teams and, and uh, having to uh, synchronize uh, work of these teams. Hence this, this very simple setup, but I think it will be very good uh, introduction and a good presentation of what auto schedule actually does. So auto schedule, as you may have guessed, will try to schedule issues in our plan. And when you click over here, you can see that it can take into consideration and update actually several fields, sprints, releases, teams. So here we can decide whether we want auto schedule feature to update only uh, issues and fields that are empty or also the ones that have values. So basically, if you already did some planning and maybe you just want auto schedule to plan issues that were not yet planned that are further in the future, you stick to empty values only. We'll cover both of them, but that's the safer, uh, safer way. And if you want to have the full plan built from, from bottom up, uh, you can go with all values. Uh, I won't click that yet. Let's look at our current setup. So we will focus on, on simple team. We can see that in active sprint, there is actually no work assigned yet. Uh, in sprint P3, well, in sprint three, we actually are over allocated. So I have 12, in this case, hours out of 10 hours of capacity uh, allocated. So we're in red over here. And in the future, there's nothing more. So when I'll do the out of schedule, I have empty values only. Let's see the, uh, the outcome. And by the way, when you, you, when you click on this, you do not have to worry. It will not update the plan right away you will see the preview of the update with information what was actually updated. So you can see that Sprint 3 is still in the red. Why? Because those two tasks that were uh, over allocating capacity for the Sprint already had the Sprint set. And when we were doing the auto schedule, we set setting that only empty sprints or empty values of sprints should, should be updated. So these two remained as they were, we're still in red over here. But on the other hand, there appeared a lot of tasks in the next sprint. So you can see that in sprint four, uh, we have 7.02 hours out of 10, and in sprint five, 36 out of eight. You can see that despite the fact that we have some room here, uh, out of schedule already put something into sprint five. This could be due to the reason that maybe there were no more tasks that were like three hours or less. So we would get into red over here. Uh, what else interesting we can see here, the kind of a purple elements uh, are the ones that were updated. So the, the ones that remained as they were the sprint, this, this, uh, yellow sprint free from task P340. 
This is the sprint that was not updated because of the setting that we choose when we were out doing auto schedule, but all of these uh, were updated and we can actually hover over the task and see what was changed. So basically here sprint from NOM was set to P3 sprint 5. Uh, over here P3 sprint 4. So we could go over uh, lower. We can actually see that collapsed column of the teams and releases also updated the value. So tasks were assigned to the team. Task in this case were not uh, assigned to any release. This already gives us pretty good indication. Uh, you can see that the change over here in this plan was pretty drastic because yeah, earlier we had like two tasks planned for sprint sprint free now we have quite a lot for different sprints a lot of tasks were assigned to the uh, uh, to this team so already it can be hard to follow and this is also why i told that we won't be discussing more complex setups as it would be a complete nightmare but anyway we can see that the next two sprints are yeah they look to be planned pretty well uh, there are some tasks that were not yet planned possibly due to the lower priority or uh, the fact that they do not have estimate. By the way, when auto scheduling is doing, uh, well, scheduling, it takes into consideration the order of the tasks on the list. It's called the rank. So the tasks that, are, that, uh, that have higher rank will be scheduled first. So when you move the tasks around, uh, you can actually get different outcomes when scheduling. This is something to remember, something important. And yeah, I just updated and you will see that the rank change. I will, uh, I will discard this for now. Okay, so that was first, first try. We, we choose that only empty sprints should be updated. So we still were in red in the sprint three because these tasks already have this sprint, uh, this field field. So let's switch to all values for the sprints. Releases teams we're not touching touching at the moment. It works in, in a similar way. Okay, let's preview the results. All right, it looks completely different. So now we were actually moved so that nothing is in sprint free. Actually, I'm not entirely sure why uh, it is like that, but let's let's look at this a bit later. But you will see that now sprint four is neatly, uh, neatly packed. So it's nearly 100% over 90. And we also have work in sprint five. No sprint is over allocated. So that looks good. Uh, I will cancel this despite the fact. Uh, so yeah, if we were in red somewhere because we already assigned more than we could chew for, for a specific sprint, the all values feature actu will actually fix that, but not always. Uh, so this was the case where we were working on the future sprint. You can see that the active sprint is this sprint uh, second. So let's actually change these tasks to be planned for second sprint. And you can see that now this sprint is over allocated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's click auto schedule all the values. So auto schedule at least last time uh, distributed work from this sprint to other sprints so that uh, it wouldn't be over allocated. Let's see here how it works now. Uh -huh. Yeah, it did not uh, this time. So this print is still over allocated. Why? This is because auto schedule does not update current active sprint. This this is an active sprint. So auto schedule does not the move tasks uh, in or out of it. This makes sense because this is sprint that we committed to already. This is sprint we're working on. And yeah, changing the scope is pretty, pretty drastic thing. So this is not something auto schedule uh, does for you. Okay, let's return to our uh, initial plan. 
So you can already see that for Agile, it actually is a pretty useful feature. So if you have very long backlog of issues and you want to see more or less when on the timeline you will be done with them, this auto schedule can do the work for you. So it will schedule issues for the sprints, uh, minding what is the capacity of the sprint or velocity of the team uh, in each sprint, and you will see how on the timeline it, lo it looks like. Of course, uh, you do not have to commit to this. So if we yeah, have for the sprints that are five months in the future, it's not something you will commit to right now, but you can get an overview. And when you get closer to the start of the sprint, you will review the content proposed by, by, by the auto schedule feature and do some minor tweaks. But the bulk of the work will be done for you. So uh, this is, in my view, where this feature shines. So for Agile, it is great. How it is for non-Agile, or what are the drawbacks for that? So if you're working in more waterfall approach, or if you have really, really important uh, and a lot of dependencies between the tasks, this is where it can be tricky and where, in my view, auto schedule fails a bit. So I did some of the changes over here uh, to, to present you this, uh, but let's have a look. We have this task is actually currently in Sprint 3. It is it has dependency with P37. This is this one. And this has some other dependencies with further, further tasks, right? Uh, so you would expect that the auto schedule will, will try to move the issue so that this dependency is respected. And it will try to, but it often does not work. So let's apply this. You will see that we are having all values on the sprint. So the fact that this is already assigned to the sprint does not really matter. Let's preview the results and see what's the outcome. Yeah, okay. So you can see that the first dependency, so this was well, this was our initial task, the one that was at the top. The dependency between this one and the next one, P37, was respected. It's good, right? But further dependencies are actually no longer respected. So uh, yeah, we the auto schedule plans this task. Uh, before the one that should be done earlier. So this is not perfect. This is something you need to look around for. Uh, there can be multiple causes of, of that. This can be uh, sprint capacity. This can be the fact that, that not all sprints are created on the boards, but these are scenarios that will happen on the daily basis for you. So you need to be careful with that and you should check whether dependencies are, uh, are respected or just after, after accepting changes, <laughs> going through the plan one more time and updating this manually. So this is area where in my view, auto schedule could, be, could work a bit better, uh, but still when we consider how much work it, will, it allows to avoid when you have long backlog that you need to, to do the planning for, just the initial planning that this feature offers saves a lot, a lot of time. All right, that will be it for this video. I hope it was useful to you. If you have any more specific questions, like for example, how to set the uh, capacity for the teams for each sprint, uh, how to set up Jira so that work with advanced roadmaps would be more efficient and easier, feel free to reach out to us. We have a lot of experience with working with multiple companies across the world, and we're happy to share this experience with you.